Metal inert gas welding is formally known as gas metal arc welding, or GMAW. MIG was developed during World War II as an extension of TIG welding technology. Combining the techniques and advantages of TIG's inert gas shielding with a continuous consumable wire electrode created a more efficient welding process. In MIG, an electrical arc is created between a continuous consumable electrode wire and the workpiece. The consumable wire not only functions as the electrode in the weld circuit, but also as the source of filler metal. The process of depositing the molten metal from the electrode wire onto the weld puddle is called transfer, and four modes of transfer are used in MIG, short circuit, globular, spray, and pulse spray. Installing the regulator flow meter is simple, but your safety requires that you do it right every time. Before attaching a regulator, blow away any dust near the valve opening by cracking the valve for a second. This creates a tight seal between the regulator and the valve and helps prevent gas leaks. Install the regulator flow meter in a vertical position to ensure that it reads correctly. This provides appropriate gas flow rates and avoids poor weld quality. Always open cylinder valves slowly, allowing the pressure to build up. Then open the valves all the way to prevent leaking of gas past the valve stem. Never use oil on any regulator or gauge, or an explosion and fire can result. The cylinder pressure gauge displays the pressure of the gas as it is dispersed from the cylinder into the regulator and indicates the amount of gas left in the cylinder. Shielding gas flows from either a gas cylinder or a manifold system through the gun assembly and to the arc. Its primary function is to shield the electrode wire, the arc, and the molten weld metal from contact with the atmosphere. In addition, some of the gas within the arc column is ionized, or electrically charged, and the charged gas helps current flow into the weldment. Most metals, when heated to their melting point, will react with air. Without shielding gas, the reaction between molten metal and air produces weld deficiencies, such as trapped slag and porosity. Both the type and flow rate of the gas have a pronounced effect on the quality of welds. The type of shielding gas you select depends on the metal you're welding, the weld quality or metal properties desired, the transfer method, process performance, and the cost of the gas. A regulator flow meter delivers a steady, preset flow of pressurized shielding gas to the welding area. Some regulator flow meters are designed for one specific gas, and some are designed for multiple gases and gas mixtures. Proper adapters are necessary for changing regulator flow meters from one gas to another. The major components of a regulator flow meter are the flow meter gauge, the cylinder pressure gauge, and the regulator. The flow meter gauge consists of a see-through tube with a small floating ball that indicates the rate of flow in cubic feet per hour, or CFH. The amount of shielding gas flow needed will vary with each job, but 12 to 15 CFH is a common starting point. Picking the right gas flow rate is also important. If the gas flow rate is too low, you'll get inadequate coverage of the weld area. If it's too high, the turbulence created will draw air into the gas column and possibly contaminate the weld. Three electrical values drive welding principles. The amount of current, or amperage, in the circuit, the amount of voltage pushing it, and the resistance in the circuit. Current is the number of electrons flowing past a given point in one second and is measured in amperes. In welding, the terms current and amperage, or amps, are used interchangeably. Voltage is the amount of electrical pressure in the circuit measured in volts. As voltage increases or decreases, the amount of current increases or decreases. A welding power source generates voltage, which results in the flow of current. Resistance is the restriction of current flow in a circuit and is measured in ohms. Voltage provides the pressure to overcome resistance and causes the current to flow.
When beginning to weld, the wire feed speed must first be adjusted to generate the right amount of heat for the metal thickness to be welded. Then, voltage is adjusted to achieve the desired weld bead characteristics. The voltage setting you start with should be low to avoid burn back. Gradually increase the voltage setting until the weld bead is the correct height and width. Sound can aid in this process. Short circuit transfer sounds like bacon frying. If voltage is too low, the electrode won't melt as required to transfer metal to the weld puddle, so it piles up on the workpiece. This is called stubbing. If voltage is too high, the arc becomes too long, unstable, and sloppy. The electrode melts too quickly and falls in large drops into an excessively large weld puddle. Most voltage controls can be adjusted before and during welding. However, if your welding equipment has a range switch or a plug type control, it should not be switched while welding or under load. Globular transfer gets its name from the large globs of weld metal that are expelled from the end of the electrode wire into the weld puddle. The globs are much larger than the droplets produced in short circuit or spray transfer and produce excessive spatter and an uneven weld. Globular transfer is considered to be a transition from short circuit transfer to spray transfer and usually occurs as a result of a mistake in setting voltage. Globular transfer is generally regarded as undesirable. The consumable electrode material used in MIG welding is called electrode wire. MIG uses continuously fed solid electrode wire to channel power from the power source to the welding arc and to provide filler metal. The wire passes from the feeder through the welding gun and to the workpiece where it is consumed at a relatively high speed. Several factors influence the selection of the electrode wires, including the type, condition, and cleanliness of base metal being welded, the required weld metal mechanical properties, and the intended mode of metal transfer. The proper selection of electrode wire is vital for creating a high quality weld. The three most important components of gun movement are the direction of gun travel, the travel angle, and the work angle. Travel speed is the rate at which the welder moves the gun along the weld joint measured in inches per minute. Travel speeds vary with work conditions and the welder's skill and are limited to the welder's ability to control the weld puddle. Most manually controlled travel speeds are well below 40 IPM. Travel speed has to match the amperage or wire feed speed and will decrease as base metal thickness increases. Push techniques allow a faster travel speed than drag techniques. Gas flow rate must correspond to travel speed also, increasing with faster travel speeds and decreasing with slower speeds. Using a travel speed that is too slow may produce a large weld with limited penetration and fusion. The energy from the welding arc dwells on top of the weld puddle rather than penetrating the base metal, producing a wider bead with more deposited weld metal per inch, but with poor weld quality. When travel speeds are too fast, too little heat is produced per inch of weld, resulting in less penetration and reduced base metal melting. The weld bead can solidify very quickly, trapping gases in the weld, which can cause porosity. Undercutting at the toes can also result. An unfilled groove in the base metal is created when travel speed is too fast to allow molten filler metal to flow into the depression created by the arc heat. The proper travel speed keeps the arc at the leading edge of the puddle and the base metal melts sufficiently to provide good penetration, fusion, and wetting or spreading out of the weld puddle. In the pull or drag technique, the gun and electrode are dragged away from the deposited weld metal. The heat remains concentrated on the weld puddle, so the base metal receives more heat, the melt goes deeper, penetration is improved, and the bead is narrower with more buildup. In the push technique, the electrode is located at the leading edge of the weld puddle and pushed toward the unmelted work surface. The push technique can offer a better view of the weld joint and the direction of the wire into the joint. In this position, however, the actual puddle outline and size are slightly hidden by the gun. 
using the push technique and faster travel speeds, directs the heat away from the weld puddle, so it's useful when welding thin materials, when using a process like hard facing, or when shallow penetration is required. The push technique also produces a flatter, wider bead, which can save time and money by reducing grinding time.